Hi y'all, this is Jordan Schlacey of Jonesville Realty Group and I am coming to you with a new ebook, First Time Home Buyer, What You Need to Know. So if you're a first time home buyer or moving to Houston, Texas or Texas in general, this might be a wonderful ebook and video for you. So you will be able to download this ebook by looking in the show notes below for the link and let's get started. So if you have saved up a down payment already, Maybe you picked out your wallpaper patterns, or if you're still working on your credit score and you have 700 questions that need to be answered, you are in the right place. So again, my name is Jordan Shalacy and I'm a local realtor in the Houston area. And this is one of six eBooks that I have out. I have Real Estate is Like a Game of Tinder, Moving to the Woodlands, and then Moving to the Woodlands, What You Should Know. Best Neighborhoods to Live In to Let Kids Be Kids, Spring vs. the Woodlands, and First Time Home Buyer, What You Need to Know, which is this video. So, number one, getting a realtor's guidance right away is insanely important. Buying a home isn't like buying a car. You can't just surf the web, narrow it down to two or three options, check your credit karma, show up at the dealership, test drive your top picks, fill out an application, and drive home in your dream car. I compare it more to having a child. You wouldn't just pick anyone to pro procreate with. You would want someone you feel you know, someone you can trust, someone you can make a decision with. Sometimes for you, with your best interests in mind, you want someone smart and intuitive and so much more. The cool thing about finding a realtor, especially since you're sitting here before me reading this post and watching this video, is that it isn't as hard as dating. As much as I want to preach to you, like you're a stranger, I know you're here reading my words, listening to my words, so convincing you to not house hunt alone shouldn't be too hard. And it isn't that I don't think you should go out it without a realtor, it is I don't think you should go out it with just any old realtor. There are over 43,000 licensed realtors in my area, and as much as I don't want to poo on the industry, not all realtors are created equal. Not everyone knows the ins and outs of the industry, home buying, home financing, negotiating, and customer service. The right re realtor, the good ones, they keep you protected. They make sure you don't overpay, buy a lemon, purchase a home that you'll regret or that will never sell, and so much more. The good ones are there for you every single step of the way, answering every single question on your mind, and addressing all of your concerns. I do pride myself on being one of the good ones, so if you're local and looking to buy or sell, please reach out. Number two, speaking with a lender should be your second step. I'm not saying you need to fill out an application and run your credit on day one, but I do want to make sure you get the complex financial questions answered that are more equipped for a lender. There might be some hiccups on your credit that you don't know about, and a lender can help bring these to a repair. And sometimes these hiccups take time. I would hate for you to find your dream home just to discover you actually can't purchase for 90 more days. I almost always recommend you get a lender recommendation and you can get my recommendation by visiting byjoeandco.com forward slash seven feet. So if you download the ebook, all of these links are clickable. Number three, owning a home is typically less than renting a home. So owning a home is typically less than renting a house or apartment. Let's say you live in a newly built apartment built on the outskirts of an established suburb and you're renting a three bedroom, two bathroom, 1,471 square foot apartment for $1,849 a month plus $100 a month for a one car detached garage. This would calculate to $1,949 a month or $23,388 a year. Now let's look at a home similar in size and the same zip code. I found a three bedroom, two bathroom, 1,642 square foot home with a swimming pool for $197,000 on a street called Granite Forge in 77379. If you decided to put 5% down for your home loan and the purchase price was $195,000, you could expect to pay about $1,515 a month depending on factors such as your credit score, the cost of homeowners, insurance you selected, and the cost of property taxes. Tax rates and appraisal values differ from home to home, so your 12-month costs would be 
would be $18,180 per year. But keep in mind, you'll be creating equity, increased value, in two ways, by paying down your principal and by the almost certain property value increases. So when renting a home, all of that payment is essentially being thrown away. So let me pull those numbers out. $1,949 a month for rent or $1,515 a month to own. What would you do with an extra $400 a month? Number four, an ideal credit score when purchasing a home is 620 or higher, but there are many different types of loans and loan programs. With FHA requiring a minimum credit score of 580 and conventional loans requiring a minimum credit score of 620, but the truth is, most lenders prefer 600 or higher. And the most cool thing about this is credit scores are a bit pliable. My preferred lender has a bit of artificial intelligence in the form of a credit simulator that can tell you exactly what you need to do to obtain an optimal credit score based on your credit report. And so I have a recommended read here to purchase a home. What does my credit score need to be and how much do I need for down payment? And then you can just click that link right there to um, arrive at the blog post. Number five, you do not need to have a large down payment to purchase a home. There are many programs out there to help assist you with down payment, and if you couple that with seller's closing cost assistance, you can purchase a home with as little as 1.5%. And I do explain that by following the next link. And then I also talk about purchasing a home with down payment assistance in that link over there. So just download the ebook and you will have these links. Now, there are benefits to larger down payments, and here are two examples. If you put down 20%, you do not owe an extra insurance called PMI. And then number two, the more you put down, the greater your chances of a smaller interest rate, saving you money in the long run. And then the next, I still have that link right there for the uh, question we asked on the last page. So a monthly mortgage payment is a bit complex, but can be easily broken down. This is number six. six. There are lots of details you need to make sure you know up front about a home mortgage payment. And let me go ahead and break them down. That makeup of that $1,515 mortgage payment we mentioned earlier. So you have principal and interest, homeowner's insurance, property tax, and PMI for anyone that put down less than 20%. So obviously, the more you spend, or the more, the more money you have saved up for your down payment, the smaller your monthly payment will be. If you have 10% to put down, your monthly payment would drop from 515 to 415. If you save 20%, you would no longer be required to pay PMI, and your payment would drop to $1,231. So you can see the payment makeup for the 515 principal and interest is about $885. Your homeowner's insurance in this instance is $138. Your property taxes, $348 a month. And then the PMI is $145 a month. One thing to keep in mind if you're doing an FHA loan, that PMI will never go away until you refinance. If you have a conventional loan, it will go away once you pay down 20%. So I also recommend how to cal calculate your monthly mortgage amount in Texas, and then I have an accurate mortgage calculator. Just follow that link right there. So number seven, new construction and homes in very new neighborhoods are almost always more expensive in comparison to resale homes in established neighborhoods. Homes in new neighborhoods typically carry a higher tax rate, which translates to a higher monthly mortgage amount. For our next example, I'm going to take the above home, Granite Gorge, which came with $4,176 in a yearly tax uh, payment. Now that is broken down into 12 payments and it's all put into escrow and then your bank pays it for you. Now this amount is prior to exemptions. Now I'm going to compare it to another home on Stony Gap Lane in Foster's Ridge. This is uh, in Montgomery, just north of the Woodlands. The estimated tax cost for Stony Gap is $6,929 a month, and I can illustrate how this changes your monthly payment for you. So with 5% down, Granite Forge would cost you $1,515 a month, and Foster's Ridge would cost you $1,745 a month. So if you do the math, that's $230 difference for a house costing just about the same price. The sole reason is a tax rate. 
So in Granite Gorge, it's 2.5186, and in Foster's Ridge, it's 3.4644. The best way I can illustrate this to you is in neighborhood one, you're looking at $195,000 for a 515 mortgage payment. In neighborhood two, you're looking at $170,000 mortgage payment. So you're looking at a $25,000 difference just by not even experiencing a 1% tax difference. So a really good illustration there. Number eight, how much you can afford weighs heavily on the amount of rotating debt you have. So rotating debt would be any type of monthly payments that are secured by a loan. So like your water bill does not count as rotating debt, but a car payment would, a credit card payment, student loans, things of that nature. Almost more important than how much you make each year is how important is how much you spend each year. Sometimes a lender might recommend paying off a car payment or a credit card to increase to increase your approval amount. If you don't know how much you can afford, you can find my favorite resource. I put it in here. Number nine, before you can figure out what you want, you need to start with your goals and your why. This one might seem a little bit confusing, but to figure out what you want, it is really important to look at your goals and purpose. Let's say you only want to own your first home for three years, then rent it out and purchase a larger home. You would want to be sure to purchase a home in a neighborhood with the best rental income potential. Let's say you want to pay off your home as fast as possible. You would want to make sure the tax rate is low. Let's say you plan to have two children in the next four years, but you want to purchase a house to call home for the next 10 years. Then you would want to make sure you purchase a home with enough bedrooms. Let's say your parents are elderly and they come to visit every month. You would want to make sure there was a second bedroom with its own bathroom downstairs. And I could go on and on with these examples, but I think you get the picture. Number 10, be realistic and hire a realtor you trust. So I really had more to say, but I'm bundling this all up together. So be realistic in purchasing your first home. You might not get everything you have on your wants list, but a good realtor will make sure you get everything you on your needs list. Remember, this isn't their first rodeo and you hired them to guide you, so please follow their guidance. If something they're doing or saying seems off, talk with peers or family members who have experience purchasing a home before. But be realistic and then hire a realtor you trust. This is truly important to contributing to a positive first-time homebuyer experience. If you hire a realtor that you trust, then everything will run smoothly. And uh, yeah, it'll just be an awesome experience for you and them. So number 11, download a good home search app. I personally only recommend using the local HAR app. It's for anyone in my area, Houston. It is the most accurate and up-to-date since it's connected directly to the MLS, which is our local database. After you download it, you just type in HAR or in Google, or you can type it in an app store. You can visit it, obviously, as a website, and then I'm talking about the app here. So once you download the app, if you click that link, that will connect us. So if you decide you would like me as your realtor, we can be connected within the app. We can communicate through the app. It is amazing. So here I would say I can make suggestions to you through the app. We can com communicate about each home within the app with the home attached to the conversation. You can also make folders to categorize your favorites, such as must-see ASAP, backups, or appointments for Sunday. Most importantly, using the app, when you're connected to me, you get access to premium data that's not available to the public. So you can see recently sold prices. You can see dates on market. There's a lot of good information. So what's next? So maybe you're thinking what's next, and I'd love to answer that question for you. I'm guessing you've already checked out my YouTube and website, so typically the next step is give me a call or a text message so we can chat. This will allow us to get to know one another and to see if we're a good fit for your home buying journey. From there, we can set up face-to-face. -face. I can recommend a lender to help get pre-approved, and or we can start looking at homes. I really do appreciate your time. From me and everyone here at Joe & Co., we really thank you. If you're looking to buy, sell, or, or in the local area, we look forward to hearing from you soon. And I just really want to throw out y'all again that I am always one click away. If you love this video and blog post and ebook, there are so many more online. Again, we have six ebooks at the time of this. 
and here's all my contact information. So you have my phone number, my website, my email, I'm on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, you name it. And then my favorite place is YouTube after my website. Again, here we talk about the HAR app, and that's something I really want to leave you with, is download that app. If you are local, that app is going to do so much for you. And I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.